What's going on, everyone? In this video, I'm going to be taking you guys on my desktop, and we're going to go through the Air DNA dashboard together. Welcome back, everyone. So here um, I have my Air DNA dashboard, and I sort of um, want to take you guys through and see what that looks like. I use this. This isn't the only tool I use um, to help like assess markets and as assess what a potential property can um, rent for. But it's it's a very it's a very good resource to have. Um, before we get started, I want to sort of talk about some of the the setup things, how much it costs, and everything. So each market's going to be a little bit different. So you'll have to enter in your market and your city to see what that uh, specific market costs. Um, and th I guess the only downside to it is you can't really purchase counties. So like for me, I like to operate within the county. I don't just focus on Asheville. Um, even though vacation rentals aren't really allowed in Asheville, there's there's thousands of them according to this. Um, but what's really cool um, is, is you can sort of like select and find like different, pro like almost exact properties here. So like if you want to go here, and literally just click to uh and you can literally click and it'll take you directly to um say like the the property um which is which is awesome um but i guess one of the downsides to it like i said is you can't really you, you can't really just choose a county so for me i pay for uh like four cities in my area which is black mountain fairview swannanoa and Asheville. Now, what I'd recommend doing is actually actually reaching out um, to Air DNA and telling them, "Hey, like I'm I'm interested in this in these cities," and they'll give you some sort of discount. I think I pay like one hundred forty dollars uh, for the entire the the entire four cities compared to like if I didn't reach out to them, it'd be like closer to like three hundred for the entire county. Um, and yeah, it's, the reason I did four, there are other cities in this area again, like Candler and Leicester, um, but. I felt like the four cities that I mainly purchased my land in and build properties is, is the best one. So enough on that. So I just want to walk you guys through the dashboard. So here it sort of gives um, a rating um, to what the market is. And that's, that's um, here are all the different things that sort of fall into that, um, whether it be like the rental growth, the rental demand, uh, the investability, um, what, what the regulation looks like in the city. I don't know where this number honestly comes from, the regulation one, because Asheville downtown is actually pretty strict, but um, gives you average daily rates across everything, private rooms and um, like one bedrooms, two bedrooms, three bedrooms, average revenue, um, which you can click on every single one of these to sort of get a better idea of like what the revenues look like. Um, here is really cool is for you like, hey, like if the property I'm purchasing or building is a three bedroom, you can see how much like three, three bedrooms um, do right here um 90th percentile 75 percentile 50th percentile sort of just showing the different the different levels i almost like look at this as like your um your occupancy right here um overview going back to the overview but yeah it, it shows you different things it shows you what what the average rates are um for each one of these now i do want to point out something uh in, in a little bit about how these numbers are skewed um but you can go into here um, my, and sort of go into the seasonality of the market shows you like what the hottest, what, are, what the hottest parts of the market are. Um, this is definitely right. That October is definitely a busier time of the year. Um, and same thing in the summer and right here you hover over, it gives you like the average revenue, uh, per room. And then if you go into here, the rentalizer tool, which is really cool, you can sort of put in, um, an address to a property that you're considering on purchasing. And then from there, um, it'll give you the properties located in your area um, that are that, and then you can see what those properties are getting. Here, um, since we develop sort of like unique properties, um, I like to look at the top properties uh, in the in the in the city and see how they're doing. So here, um, you can see that this uh, these are the top properties uh, in the area. You can also dial it down to like how many bedrooms um each specific so like if i wanted like a three bedroom uh property that accommodates six people say like or, or less is what i'm building i can apply the changes and see what the top properties are doing in in that area uh and and, and are under those um uh, like parameters 
and that this is this is really helpful to see. Um, now, I do want to talk about that this is the specific number, the revenue. So here it shows that they're getting about one hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars in gross revenue. So this number is important because th this number is skewed a little bit because when you see that, you're like, oh, my gosh, that's that's incredible. So that number includes um, that number includes the cleaning fee and it also includes the 3% that Airbnb, so Airbnb takes 3% from hosts. That number is already in that, a, a part of this 100, close to 150,000. So when you're looking at these numbers, you can you can sort of figure out what the cleaning fee is by like hopping on to, to the listing and seeing what they charge for cleaning, then subtracting that. So just know that this isn't an exact number. It doesn't include the cleaning fees. It doesn't include um, what Airbnb is taking. It's, it's an overall number of what, the, a gross number what what the the um the host is getting for this property and, and we when i go through here i sort of like to find properties that are similar to the ones i'm building sometimes it doesn't happen so you sort of just gotta go off of like more like your top numbers or something so you can see like essentially just like what the top properties in the area are, are, are getting um, but this is my favorite tool um, to use, just seeing the, the top properties and everything. So you can see like the top property in the whole market um, makes about 360,000 a year, which is, which is really good. <laughs> um, yeah. And then if you go over here, you can compare different markets as well. So you can like plug in the, now you can only compare different markets that you pay for, um, but you can, uh, you can throw those in and like you can purchase them and then compare the markets. Um, but yeah, that's, that's essentially my overview of how I use this. And, um, you, you can see here, like it'll give you like, uh, the one bedrooms are 37% of the market, um, 27% of the market at like two bedrooms, but each one's different. So if I go in here and type in black mountain, which is another popular vacation rental area, about 25 minutes away from Asheville, you can see that the. The rating is actually a little bit better and then there's actually less listings in this area um, but here you can do the same thing check the seasonality you can check like the pacing um, just seeing like how throughout the whole year like how how the market acts smart rates is interesting i've never really played with this too much um, it's sort of like an, an overall recommendation on what your pricing should be and there's a lot of different tools for that um, and then same thing, going through the rentalizer, top properties, again, my favorite tool. So you can see here that the top property, you could see that in Black Mountain, log cabins are more popular just by looking at the top properties compared to in Asheville, where it was more like a, a modern type of thing. So that's where that, that also can sort of play into your strategy when it comes to deciding which market you want to be building in. I build in all, all markets in my area, whether it be Fairview, Black Mountain, Asheville, um, those are some of the markets that sort of are in the county, but not in the city. Um, but yeah, you can just go on here. Some of the properties are on both Airbnb and VRBO. You can just, you literally can see exactly what your potential competition is, is, uh, is listing their properties for and how much they're charging and go through their exact photos. Just like that. Exit out of that. Now, I do want to say that there are other um, there are other tools out there to help you analyze properties um, like this that are similar to this. I just don't have any experience with them, um, and I'm, I'm probably gonna, I'll probably do a, another video on them, like on those tools once uh, once I become a little bit more familiar with them. I've just I've always used AirDNA to get a general idea of um, of what the properties rent for. Now, one of the strategies I use if I want to become super, if I want to be super conservative in my numbers is I'll look at the seasonality of a specific area or property. Um, say like if I'm building like a three bedroom that can sleep six people. I sort of look at overall what, what I can charge per night um, and a weekend rate from there. I would say this number is actually a little low. Um, but you can, you can sort of see, get a general idea 
of like what your slow season is going to be and then what's what your high season is going to be for that you can see how the numbers are changing a little bit going over the reds a little bit um always always underestimate your numbers um especially if you're taking on investor money and stuff like that but yeah that's 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 the entire overview um that's how i assess uh markets uh using air dna uh for my property so i hope everyone enjoyed that um if you have any questions or comments please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and i'll see everyone on next week's video thanks